Hello and welcome to this how-to video where I'll be covering the assembly steps for the G1023 series of saws. Assembly steps are very similar between models with a few little differences that I'll note along the way in the process. You'll need a few items for setup of the machine, as well as an additional hand for some of the larger components. Before we go any further, pause here to see a full list of the items you'll need for assembling this machine. After the initial setup, you'll need a dust collection system with 4-inch hose and hose clamps as well. And if you intend to have the machine stationary in your shop, we have a section included in the manual that covers the required clearances. And the latest version of that manual is also available on grizzly.com under the Manuals tab. You can also reference the manual inventory section for the included items that arrive with your machine with an independent list for each model available. Now, let's clean up your machine. We've taken care to cover the unpainted cast iron surfaces of your machine with a heavy duty rust preventative to help prevent corrosion. This coating can take a bit of effort to remove and there are several ways to remove it, but we prefer something like this, which is applied to the surface and allowed to set for about five to 10 minutes before being wiped away with a disposable rag or a paint scraper. It's important to remember that never to use a chlorine-based solvent such as acetone or brake part cleaner as they may damage the painted surfaces of the machine. So we've used our solvent on the top, got it pretty clean. Now it's time to remove the machine from the pallet and place it in my mobile base. If you intend to use a mobile base with your machine, now is a great time to walk through the base instructions and seat the machine. Remove the three bolts and washers from the end of the main table. Check the mating surfaces of the left extension wing and main table for any burrs or material that may get in the way. With help from another person, align the left extension wing with the main table and connect the bolts, ensuring that the tops are in perfect alignment with the straight edge. Then, tighten the bolts. With the bolts tightened down, place the straight edge across the tables again to ensure that the surfaces are flat. If the outside end of the extension wing tilts down, use a strip of masking tape run along the bottom edge of the main table, like this, to help shim the extension wing up. This, of course, means that you'll need to remove the wing from the main table to install the tape before then reinstalling it to check the alignment. If the outside end of the extension wing tilts upward, use a strip of masking tape run along the top edge of the main table to help shim the extension wing downward. Always be sure to check the table alignment after the wing has been reinstalled. If you're assembling the G1023RL, you can simply repeat the wing installation process on the right extension wing. If you have the G1023RLW or the RLWX models, don't install the right extension wing until after the fence rails and tube rails are installed, which we'll cover in just a bit. The same goes for the G1023RLX with the large extension table. That will also be mounted after the rail and tube rails are installed. Now, it's on to the next step. Attach the on-off switch to the extension wing, then mount the switch brace using the pre-installed table mounting fasteners onto the top, and the switch mounting fasteners onto the bottom, like this. Install the motor cover latch onto the cover itself with the included hardware. Then install the motor cover by lining up the hinges with the hinge pins. Next, mount the fence resting brackets onto the side of the motor cover and install the dust port onto the back side of the cabinet. Next, place the shaft key into the keyway of the hand wheel shaft. Then slide the hand wheel into place and tighten the set screw. Next, place the lock knob into the center of the hand wheel and put the hand wheel handle on.
All right, with the main body of the saw assembled, it's on to the rails and fence. Install each using the included hardware and pre-drilled mounting holes. When positioning the fence, ensure that there's an even 1 16th of an inch gap between the fence and the table surface. That's the optimum clearance you'll want in the future. And over time, you'll want to recheck this gap. Now with the rails installed, it's time to place the router table extension if you have the G1023RLW or the RLWX, or it's time to add the extension table if you have the G1023RLX. Let's start with the router table extension wing installation, which includes a set of installation instructions with the machine. If you need these instructions, you can find them on the manuals tab on grizzly.com by searching the model number H7507. To install the router table extension wing, you'll want to align the extension table mounting holes with the main table mounting locations. The extension wing is heavy, so make sure you have an assistant to help hold it. These should align both tables similar to how we attached the left extension table earlier, using the included hardware. Align the tops of each table using a straight edge, and then shim the extension table up or down as we previously covered. Install the adjustable feet into the bottom of each leg, and ensure that the threaded feet are shorter than the table saw rail height. Use the included hardware to secure the legs to the fence rails. Then adjust the feet to the ground and tighten the hex nut on the foot against the leg to lock the height in place. Now let's proceed to the scale and cursor setup.
With all these items completed, it's time to connect the 4-inch dust line and locate an approved plug outlet for the machine, and we're ready for the test run. For the test run, ensure that all setup items are out of the way and put on your PPE. Plug the machine in and remove the switch disabling lock, and we're ready to fire it up. Turn the machine on and verify that it's running smoothly with little to no vibration or rubbing noise. If you hear any strange noise or feel excessive vibration, turn the machine off and disconnect it from power before correcting the problems. Turn the machine off and insert the lock through the on button, and then test to ensure that the lockout is working properly by pushing the button. If the machine does turn on, immediately stop the machine and call Grizzly Tech Support for assistance. With that final check completed, we're all done and ready to get to work. Thank you so much for following along with this how-to video and please consider subscribing to Grizzly's YouTube channel for more how-tos and the latest product videos. And we hope you enjoy years of service from your machine.